Hello and welcome to my humble abode of a channel. Now, I say that as if I've actually done this, you know, where I address you, the audience, and as if a lot of people actually watch my videos. But the fact of the matter is, it's going to be a completely different uh, video than what I'm used to. So, oh, and fun fact, I actually recorded this yesterday, but all the audio files got corrupted. So yay, <laughs> I have to do this all over again. Now, what's this video going to be about? Well, it's a commentary slash review of this really cool indie horror game that I helped and created, but not, you know, not the programming aspect, but I did a lot of the playtesting as well as the proofreading for. And I think some of my ideas actually went into the game as well, so that was pretty cool. The game is none other than Limited Insight Studios, Sleep Paralysis, The Uncanny Valley, which released on 14th or 15th for some people, December. 2022 and uh, yeah this is just gonna be one of those you know free-flowing unscripted videos and I hope you enjoy it it's just hitting me now that I have actually yet to introduce myself so I call myself Death Guard Knight um, I know it's weird to say that out loud especially for me since I've never done that before I've only you know ever typed it out promoting what I do and everything. Apart from that, I do um, video game reviews on Steam. I talk about, tweet about them. And lately, I've becoming more um, active on YouTube. Things like YouTube Shorts, you know, just the simple baby level editing, <laughs> if one can even call it editing. Um, playthroughs with the 12th minute of a game series I've been doing. Mostly obscure horror game solutions. And yeah, that's pretty much what this channel is all about. And I'm hoping to do more videos like this one where I talk about horror games that are underrated, talk about their stories, stuff like that. With that really, really long intro out of the way, it's time to put out the disclaimer that, spoilers alert, there will be a lot of spoilers. If you're into that sort of thing, then that's fine. But if you're not, then I shall tell you to skedaddle, vamoose, hightail it out of here. There's gonna be a lot of spoilers, so please do not say I've not warned you. Still with us? Great. Now I shall start with a little summary of what the game actually is. So let's see, let me just recall for a minute there. Like I said, this is unscripted. Um, so you play as this character called Thomas Chan. Um, sorry if I'm butchering the name as the, you know, as the dev intended it. But I've, you know, I'm reading it, I'm seeing it from a Chinese pronunciation. So, you know, something like Jackie Chan. Again, very sorry if I butchered it. And anyway, your wife, Zoe, also Chan, is away on vacation. I can't remember the specific location exactly, but basically Thomas chose to stay behind and as if out of nowhere, he gets these sort of nightmares, quote unquote, where he's sort of awake, but not really. His hands, feet, the whole body can't move except for the eyes. You can blink and look around to a limited degree because your head is fixed in place. That's pretty much when the entire premise is. Thomas starts to get these um, recurring nightmares a few times in a row, a few nights in a row, and it's up to him to actually do the research, confront them, and eventually, hopefully with the right choices, he can overcome them. He'll be encountering places such as a dark and cramped warehouse, a scene which was lifted straight out of a movie that he's seen before. I think it was a horror movie, but again, I'm not so sure. Also, a certain flight that he has been dreading ever since he's been on it. He replays it over and over in his head, and it's sort of like scene uh, from PT, where instead of a hallway, it's a actual flight. And there's also that house with his abusive ex taking over, back under her reign, and he's just doing whatever it takes to not obey her every command, but it's actually quite hard for him to do so, given their history together. That and a couple of other places that I'm not going to say or mention yet, because some of it has to be a surprise. <laughs> so the first thing I want to point out as to what makes this video game particularly scary is that a lot of movies and games, you know, peers of this sort of sleep paralysis genre, they tend to do that one thing. You're experiencing this because there is a paranormal phenomenon or a ghost haunting you during your sleep. And yeah, they tend to go that route up until the end and it's usually quite predictable. And so I found this game to be a breath of fresh air because it actually incorporates that but cleverly in a way that's 
also subtle and it doesn't really tell you the answer outright. So yes, there are demons in this game, but then again, there aren't because of the way the game and this goes to point number two of what makes this game so scary is that it's shockingly well researched. And what I mean by that is as a fellow um, sleep paralysis sufferer myself, I had the one major experience in like 2019 and that haunts me to this day. So the symptoms, right? The accuracy, you've got the entire body being frozen, not being able to move whatsoever. And you've got that persistent feeling of dread inside you because you start to see things that may or may not be there during this period. From the symptoms to the causes and eventually how to face and overcome this sleep paralysis, or at least, you know, to better prepare for it in the future, the dev has covered all of those to a T. And I think that's what makes this so impressive. Keep in mind, a lot of this video will be um, praises towards the game because that's honestly how I found the game to be just so well constructed and everything. Do not be surprised if you basically think this is like a 100% biased video in favor of the developer because I do have a separate full review up on Steam where the only con that I mentioned was that it's a non-mainstream intellectual horror title and that could be a major turn off to some, but not for me. But again, back to the commentary. Now, just to share a little bit of my own experience, I've outlined it in my Steam review as well. Link in the description. Okay, I was in the United Kingdom for a bit. I just, I don't know, you know, I haven't been able to recall any dreams from the time I was there, but then, you know, I remember being riddled with anxiety because it was my first time living alone. It was my first time being away from my home country and it was a particularly terrifying life experience hit you in the face moment and so yeah that's that's exactly why i think that it happened one of the causes was a great deal of anxiety distress and perhaps from a past trauma as well of which by the way thomas has all three and so that's why the sleep paralysis could be because of those back to my sleep paralysis where I I didn't see anything like in the game like Thomas in front of me but I felt something hugging like just squeezing me tight the way a snake would but instead of snake's body all over my hands all coiled up it's actually a pair of hands they were just gripping me ever so tightly and I was pretty sure that I was being assaulted in that moment and why I thought that way was because well I have a little history in that area um nothing serious well anywho <laughs> and at some point the um the shadow i call it the shadow because i don't really see this person start to pant and breathe breathe out very excitedly and i could feel the puffs of air at the back of my neck and i think that's 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 the moment that really really stayed with me the most and luckily that hasn't happened since i remember just recalling why can't I move? I know I'm awake. The environment I was in, it was my room, my rented room, and it was identical. Like nothing was out of place. The only thing was I was on my side and this thing or creature or whatever it was, was just, just taking me for a joyride. It emotionally, physically, I don't even know how I got through that. I, I, I was pretty sure like I would, you know, pass out in my sleep or whatever. But I, I'm glad I did and I haven't had an attack, you know, since. It was a very weird time. The third point that I want to share is Thomas has a few very specific scares and that's why I think a lot of people will not be able to, you know, get terrified by the game because supposedly these scares are specific and particular to this character. The uncanny valley effect, which is, you know, you see anything mannequin or doll and they're human-like, although they don't look human, not really anyway. There's something about creating a sort of a goosebump uh, fear towards the person. And yeah, although that may not scare a lot of people, but there are a, a minority of people out there who actually get freaked out by this. It's a, it's a documented effect and everything. The second one is a fear of flying. Now I, obviously I'm I haven't been a frequent flyer. I've only been on two flights to coincide with my sleep paralysis experience. That's the flight to and from London. <laughs> so yeah, that. so I can't really say I fear it entirely, but having never been on a plane 
prior to that little excursion to the UK. It was a very blood draining experience because you know, like Final Destination, right? How could you not? And I'm glad that didn't happen. I was, I was like thrilled. But in the end, I think I was overcome more by the beauty of the flight than the actual experience itself. Now, abusive exes, uh, just putting it out there, I've not had any significant other before in my life, so I can't say I relate to this, but I know that it could be a potential issue or trigger for a lot of players out there. So all these three scares, although may not be like outlast level, chase you all around the room, trying to fend off with a gun. The scares are more subtle, I would say. And I think just by having the range of these scares, right, it sort of ups the possibility and chances of scaring a wide range of audience instead of just having a game that revolves around sleep paralysis the entire time. It actually paces itself by first you learn what sleep paralysis is, that's like the introduction stage, and then you're immersed into your into the possible causes and everything and after that you're you're confronted by these choices that makes no sense or so you think and now we're approaching my favorite part of this commentary it's the way the game leaves open-ended mysteries and at the same time they sort of have concrete answers right so first of all now the game doesn't tell you this outright but if you walk off or wander into the woods you can actually find these uh, documents littered around that you don't know who they're from but like all of them have the same font and the same handwriting now there are two possible explanations for this so firstly in the game earlier on you research about this character jane malone malone again sorry to butcher the name but she's this sleep paralysis sufferer who's been through this before and has anticipated after a few episodes with the sleep paralysis you go off on a nightmare trip so it's possible that they were left by her in this shared dream experience that all sleep paralysis sufferers go to that's explanation number one or explanation number two thomas has had these episodes before and instead of remembering them taking into account like for the next time he goes off on these sleep paralysis nightmares he doesn't realize that he's been leaving these notes for himself he displays a significant amount of confusion. Where are these notes coming from? What if it's actually him leaving those notes to himself, by himself? And just recall like earlier on as well, he, Thomas mentioned he goes outside to find peace and, and serenity, like the night air, the night sky, everything brings him calmness. So it wouldn't be unheard of if he actually, you know, during these episodes, he goes out to relax and just forget everything now mystery number two were there actually sleep demons in the game the answer is yes or no it's sort of mixed but <laughs> remember that in order for it to be characterized as a sleep paralysis one of the fundamental symptoms is that you have to have these hallucinatory effects or images during your sleep and so for thomas he sees a lot of those but there's this strange part in the bad ending where if you actually do not succeed in making all the right brave choices or like let's say like the very first major encounter in the warehouse where you have a sleep paralysis standing up you can choose to close your eyes or not if you choose to close your eyes that means you're not actually confronting the source of your fears it actually contributes to the overall probability of getting the bad ending do enough of that and you'll start to hallucinate or see these demons in real life as well. That's precisely why I'm a little unsure as to whether the demons exist or not. And I like that the game doesn't give you the answer outright, although there are many, many answers, they're not the answers to those questions. They're enough to keep, you know, the mystery and the intrigue afloat. That's another charm that it has. I think the most impressive thing that the developer has done with this game is incorporating the duality between dream and reality and so not to sound like totally twin peaks right but you're never really able to tell which part of the so-called nightmare slash dream is actually real life or not because remember sleep paralysis the first few episodes that you have in the game take place sort of in real time just that you're hallucinating some creature and beings and then when you're in the nightmare sequences 
You start off from a very familiar place and you wade through the darkness into these other connecting interspersing realm that, that remember hold significant meaning to Thomas because he's seen and been in these experiences before. And then at the end of the game, when you start to slowly snap out of it or wake up, you awaken in the woods close by to Thomas's house. It's, it's more like he's actually going on these trips in reality, although he's visualizing this whole otherworldly experience. In this sort of waking moments, he has, he has to make very odd choices choices that he would not have done anywhere else or in real life. So it's sort of like the dream, the every other dream that we have. You know, the feeling of uh, trying to run from danger and your legs just have that weight to them or they're dragging you and you think you are making sprints when actually you're just, just taking a step at a time. Or how, you know, one moment you're somewhere and another moment you're starting like a different section of a dream. So all of that it captures that dreaminess and uncertainty very, very well. And I think the developer is, is fully committed to delivering this experience to you. And while we're on that, how much of the games' events are actually accurate? Not real, because that's a matter of perspective, but accurate. Remember, we're playing through Thomas's retelling of his nightmare or dreams. And I don't know about you, but have you ever tried to recall the dreams you had? Like even though you have dream journal on the side just ready for you to write it, as soon as you wake up, you lose a lot of details and only fragments of it are recalled. So I'm beginning to doubt like whether Thomas is actually truthful to us, the audience, or he's still actually facing some underlying trauma that he's not ready to open up about. Just something to think about. Another theory that I've got for you is that Thomas has a lot of these underlying um, mental illnesses that he's not fully aware of. Now remember, all this while he has had his wife by his side, and in the beginning he mentions that they actually moved from the city into the countryside, into this isolated woodlands, and so I'm, I'm willing to wager that the move was mainly because of Thomas. And no, I'm not, you know, victim blaming or anything, but I'm just saying that out of the two, we only get to know Thomas, so it's most likely him being the direct cause, <laughs> right? However, with Zoe on vacation, he loses his pillar of support temporarily, and that's how he disconnects with reality. And, and sort of relapses into his past trauma and everything. Like, was it a coincidence that they happened only when Zoe wasn't around? I say not. Of course, I may be going off on tangents, you know, but that's the fun thing about theories. Come to think of it, he probably also has sleepwalking disorder. So that explains, you know, all those notes that have been left around and why they're found really, really deep into the woods. And remember, in chapter eight or nine, he actually wakes up in the woods like how did how did he get there so what else if not because he has sleepwalking disorder paired with sleep paralysis paired with all these anxiety and possibly depression as well as a result of alice the fear of flying and you know the movie that terrified him as a child i just also want to say really quickly that perhaps you know the game isn't as relatable to a lot of people because sleep paralysis is actually quite rare. I think a lot of people probably don't even recall the times that they've had it and that's why they haven't had like the first hand experience, sorry to make the sound like a job interview or anything, but you probably need to have the experience to be able to see what this game is doing and where it's coming from. Like for me, I've had the experience, you know, in the UK and so seeing this game was like a real treat because I wanted to understand this condition slash phenomenon much better, and I think I did. And if so, so to people who have not maybe had the chance, and I'm not wishing it on them, like I'm not wishing the sleep paralysis on anyone because it's a really dreadful thing to go through. But you know, even if you do not find it scary, what I'm saying is this game actually prepares you for them to know that everything is going to be alright because it's just all in your head. Just, you know, bear through it, push through, and you will be fine. 
And with that, I would say that marks the end of the little commentary that I have for Sleep Paralysis, The Uncanny Valley where I covered, you know, theories that were in no way endorsed by the dev himself. And we also talked about maybe some of the inconsistencies that aren't really inconsistencies, but they're more to do with the game's unpredictable and unstable quality because, you know, everything is a dream or is it? <laughs> and I also want to take this chance to thank the developer for giving me this opportunity to be part of a project especially a horror project being a big big fan myself and it's been quite stressful right given the months we've had up to release but i'm really glad it came out and doing this video is gonna be like my little way of saying thanks but also it gives me closure because this game is just phenomenal it's it's amazing you should check it out on steam i've again i've got the link to my full steam review in the description below and yeah, if you found this commentary helpful or you found it just as mere rambling, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. And with that, I will see you around next time.